Coming up on this episode of the Model 3 Owners Club Show. We have some more Model 3 news for you and some production updates. We're going to recap the Tesla Semi event from yesterday. Yep, and we also have some federal tax credit rebate things for the U.S. residents. We have some other manufacturer news. And we'll get to these stories and more. And of course, the infamous mailbag coming right up. Well, thanks for tuning in to this edition of the Model 3 Owners Club show. My name is Kenneth Pokora. I'm Trevor Page. This is episode 25. Already? <laughs> Can you believe it? 25. Yeah. Wow. So young still. <laughs> Just time flies. Time flies. Well, thanks for tuning in, folks. And before we get going on the subject matter, uh, Trevor and I just want to say a big thanks to everybody who watched our, our in-depth Model 3 video that we put out a couple of weeks ago now. We're just extremely pleased by the response we got from that video. I think it kind of blew our minds. Yeah, um, I had a pretty good idea yeah. that it was going to be something that people want to watch, but it certainly exceeded my expectations. So, yes, a big thank you to everybody out there. And if you haven't seen it, don't forget to like it, subscribe, and share it out to everybody. Please do, yeah. we got great coverage for some of the non-regular sites that we get from you know, things like Forbes and other places. So we're mm -hmm. very happy for that. So thank you. And thanks for all the comments. We got thousands of comments. Yes. Couldn't respond. Well, I'm sorry if we haven't that. responded, but when you get over 3,000 <laughs> comments on the video, you just can't keep track of that. So apologize for that. But uh, And we hope at some point to do another one. Yeah, so we'd like to do a follow-up eventually. Yes. Do a follow-up. So stay tuned. All right. Well, we have some Model 3 news. Let's get into that. Let's get into it. So one of the important events that happened about a week and a half ago was the Tesla quarterly call. Mm -hmm. And of course, from those calls, we get a lot of information about status on deliveries and numbers and revenue streams and all this good facts. So we wanted to kind of pull some information out relative to Model 3. The good news is that they are working feverishly to produce the Model 3. <laughs> some bad news is they haven't produced enough to what we would like to see. So based on that last quarterly call, they produced, or they say deliver 222 Model mm -hmm. 3. So that's a different number. Production is probably higher because they always have some in transit. Um, we've seen some recent pictures over the last few days about a bunch of Model 3 sitting in parking lots, you know, that kind of stuff outside mm -hmm. places. So they produced more than that, but they delivered just over a couple hundred. We've said right from the beginning, uh, and so has Elon, that the Model 3 is designed for, for uh, lots of manufacturability, right? It's not really that difficult to build from a car manufacturer um, viewpoint. And Tesla, of course, is trying to automate that production as much as possible to get the speeds that they want to be able to crank this thing out at in building it. In fact, they, they're automating it more than they do the current SX line, yes, if I'm not much, mistaken, much more. correct? Mm -hmm. And they've talked about the Model 3 having about 10,000 unique parts. And I'm not sure how that is versus a normal car, but I'm sure it's 100,000 parts or something. On <laughs> well, a, I don't think it's quite that high. But or a lot more, right? <laughs> a, a normal more. car? <laughs> yeah. Um, so they acknowledged in the caller, Elon actually spoke because he was asked a question. He acknowledged that there was a, a bottleneck that had slowed down production. And the initial production stems from the battery module um, in the Gigafactory 1 production, that there were some mo problems in the machines that were building modules one and two, and zone two to get really technical, as yeah, he explained yeah. it. Uh, and maybe you could you could explain a little bit more about that, Trevor. I know we've seen pictures of assembly lines and, and the speeds, but these are actually machines that put those the, all the batteries together in the module. Yeah, well, so, so just to reiterate, um, uh, you know, Tesla builds the, you know, the 2170 cell, and then they take a bunch of those cells and they put them into a brick or what they call a module. And then there's four of these modules that go into the battery pack. The building process of that is divided into uh, four zones at the Gigafactory. And mm -hmm. they said that the two of the zones have fallen behind a little bit right. because the whole Model 3 program is about not only uh, making the car easier to manufacture, but the, there's a, a tremendous amount of automation. And that automation mm -hmm. is what leads them uh, to reduce the cost of the car. It's part of the cost reduction of the car. Right. So that's why they can't just say, okay, we're just going to build them by hand now. It has to be it has to be automated. It has to be done right. So the production bottlenecks are really, um, you know, as a result of this automation. Now, this is a completely new production line for them. So it's going to take a while for them to work out the bugs. And, and of course, we're seeing that now. So in true fashion, as Elon has been warning us right from the beginning, if they can't get a supplier to come to the plate or they drop the ball, they have to be fully prepared to take on the job themselves. And that's exactly what's going on here. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, one of the suppliers, of course, that's responsible for the automation that builds the 
battery modules, not the battery pack itself, but the battery modules mm -hmm. has fallen behind, so they had to rewrite a bunch of the software. So anyways, bottom line is uh, the production ramp has been pushed off until late Q1 of uh, 2018. So I will go on record saying March 31st, 2018. Well, like, yeah, let's it, just, exactly. Know, so it let's call it what it's going to be. It's so. important to remember, yeah. it doesn't mean that they're not building Model 3s. They haven't right. stopped. They're still building the cars. It's just mm -hmm. at a slower rate than they expect it to be at this particular time. Right. And they're still hoping to hit 5,000 cars a week by the end of, uh, you know, next quarter or no, not next, next. Well, yeah, we're yeah, technically in the fourth quarter, quarter now. Mm -hmm. So the first quarter of uh, 2018. Mm -hmm. So they're still building cars. They're still being delivered. We see them on the trucks. Uh, you know, people are still pictures, uh, taking pictures of them. Mm -hmm. They are slowly spreading around the United States. There's some in Ohio and mm -hmm. I mean, they're all over the Wisconsin, place Wisconsin, I think just turned up. All exactly. Places, so yeah. the, mm -hmm. they are being delivered all over the place. They're still going to Tesla employees and uh, friends and family, but not to the general public yet. Uh, it just, I think for a lot of people that are really expecting to get a car, you know, towards the end of this year, there's still people going to be able to get a nice Christmas present. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the most of us, we'll have to probably wait a little longer. Of course, outside of the U.S., um, we're still looking at sometime late 2018. Uh, still a placeholder at this point. Yeah. Uh, unless you're an American who has a reservation, there's no way to tell as far as, you know, the month breakdown as to when you're going to get That's the right. car. So they're super us, yeah. focused on U.S. production. So, of course, that um, bottleneck and the slowdown, as you just mentioned, pushing everything out. There was he was asked Elon was asked on that call about how many will be produced this calendar year, and he just said thousands. So you know he didn't really elaborate on how many, um, and and they also don't have any clear indication now of the timeline and when they'll hit that ten thousand per week milestone. That was something they were wanting to hit, I think, around the middle of next year, or definitely aiming for twenty eighteen. But now. There's no clarity when they're going to hit that. So they've got yeah, they to take some baby steps. There. They've backed off on that. For they've sure, backed so. up on that. The Financial Times has investigated as well some of the production issues, and they found that there were, uh, or potentially that there are some supplier part issues. Some of the supplier parts are not coming in as fast as needed. Part of that is due to some potential last minute tweaking of the production lines. And we know that Elon likes to go there and tweak things on the fly. And that, again, has a bit of a domino effect on how things happen. So that could be happening. These are speculated. And there was another report from an insider about the body welding concern. And it's not about the quality of the welds or anything to do with that. It's about welding cars fast enough through these high-tech machines that they have for spot welding, but having the right um, skilled labor to run these robots and to oversee and supervise these. That's the problem. They just don't have the right skilled labor to do that. These, This is apparently a very complex part of that manufacturing process you have to regulate the the right amount of heat and applying it at, at, at a certain speeds if they're trying to crank these out and that potentially is causing a slowdown mm -hmm. so let's wait and see i mean if they can get two to three thousand that's better than uh only a few hundred and that should encompass most of the friends and family if not get into some public deliveries i think that that's going to start we're going to start seeing some public deliveries. yeah i would probably say somewhere in the january february time frame we'll see general deliveries actually. i think yeah. sooner i think before the end of the yeah. year we'll, we'll okay. start seeing some. well we'll keep an eye on it you know even one or two of public deliveries <laughs> <laughs> now analysts say everybody's still staying faithful in the stock and we don't talk about the stock so much in the show but it, it's interesting that the the sentiment out there and on the you know after the call was that Tesla really needs to stop over promising and under delivering and we've been on record reporting look when you when you hear these numbers from Elon and see this stuff take it with a grain of salt take it lightly if he says it's um, called Elon time for a reason. Elon time if he says sixty <laughs> then think thirty or twenty you yeah. know for yeah. as an example so. Yeah. But we did talk about it on the last show. They really need to, to slow down, take a breath, and, and, and continue on this focus of getting Model 3s out the door. Um, and there's also some analysis that think that Tesla may have to raise more capital in the second quarter of next year because of some of these slowdowns. And we know that they're spending money like crazy uh, because they have to ramp up production. So that may be something we may, we may see, but don't be concerned about it. Right. Yeah, well, they will have to raise some more capital when they want to reach the 10,000 because mm -hmm. that's another expansion of the production line. The production line right now can't do 10,000, yeah. so they will have to add more. So that's what you, when you see a capital raise sometime next year, that'll be the second part to reach to the 10,000. That's why they haven't, you know, they've, they've started cutting back on spending because they just want to really get things going now, get it perfected, and use the time between when they're doing that and when they reach to the 10,000 to really review some of their production um, mm -hmm. capabilities and uh, really make it even better. So Makes sense. Yeah. Part of that spending that they've done, burning through cash, is they've acquired a company, a machinery company called Perbix. Uh, 
They are a company that builds and services highly automated, high volume manufacturing machinery. Boy, that sounds like a dreadnought to me almost. <laughs> so the machine that builds a machine basically, and they acquired this company and now it's part of the Tesla uh, DNA and uh, w- which will help them continue to design and build and service these machines that uh, build the machines. So that's good news. Again, as they like to in-house and you know, if they can't outsource it, let's just buy them or bring it in-house. They're a vertically right? integrated They're company. Vertically integrated. Let's talk about that semi-event. Wow. What do you think? I stayed up late and I watched it. Wow, uh, very impressive. Now, for those of you who haven't seen it, this is a bit of a spoiler. So if you want to pause the video, go ahead and do that. Watch the reveal event. There's a few of them on YouTube. But uh, anyways, we're here to spoil the whole thing for you. We are. So, uh, yeah, the semi-truck is real. Those spy pictures that were uh, posted a few weeks ago, uh, that's the real deal. Look legit, so yeah. That was, you know, it's a very aerodynamic. Mm-hmm. So some specs. Uh, this thing is going to have a 500 mile EPA range, and it's rated at highway speed. Yeah, which was impressive. Yeah. 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 And a full load, 80,000 mm-hmm. pound full right. load. Yep. Uh, it'll do zero to 60 in five seconds, and use it. That's even faster than the Model. 3. I was just looking at the Model Three spec. It's 5.6 <laughs> seconds, and here's a truck. You know, of course, without the trailer, that's going to beat the Model Three. Yeah, oh, and well, a that's full, pretty fast. Yeah, full load. It'll do yeah. zero to 60 in 20 seconds, which is, which is fast. just unheard of. If you're on an on ramp behind a truck trying to get onto the highway, you know that 20 seconds is a long time, right? Well, I think. Or, or you know, longer, and, so. and I remember watching the thing, and I'm thinking, yeah. why are they focusing so much on performance? Yeah. I mean, it just seems silly. It's a semi truck, but you know what? Now that I've had some time to actually think about it, time is He's money. Pretty, it is. That, that's what Elon was trying to get at. Yeah. And that's mm-hmm. the second part of this yep. is that time is money. Yep. Um, so I think that this performance, I mean, I mean, everybody hates being stuck between behind a semi truck. Mm-hmm. I was just like coming down here to do, do yep. the show. And I'm like frustrated because I'm behind these trucks and yep. I can't stand the fact that they're so slow to accelerate. Yep. So if these things can get up to highway speed or road speed at the same speed as regular cars, yep. then it reduces a lot of the frustration. So anyways, that's my little it looked impressive. And of course, with it, with being a single gear mechanism, you don't have all the shifting and from a from a usage perspective uh, i have a relative who drives a truck and and i've had the the opportunity in the past to drive a, an eight speed you know big big uh 30 ton truck a big dump truck a three axle <laughs> it, it's a lot of work to get those gears going and it takes a long time to get there so i really feel for these people that are going to step into this and go what all I have to do is step on the pedal and go. I don't have to do all this other stuff. My That's cousin Bill be used to be. Hey, Bill. My yeah. cousin Bill used to be a truck driver. Yeah, so there you he'll, go. He'll probably yeah. like this stuff. And I have another relative who's currently <laughs> on too. So, uh, uh, but you know, as you said, aerodynamic with a 0.36 drag coefficient. I mean, that's Elon said it's better than uh, one of these supercars that are out there that he, uh, the Bugatti that he compared mm-hmm. it to, which was pretty pretty slick. And they're building this network of mega chargers. You know, not Megatron. Don't get uh, you know no uh, not no trademarks. They're not superchargers. Mega chargers that will allow the trucks to recharge in uh, to 80% in about 30 minutes. So the same kind of experience. So, you know, the drivers by law have to stop over certain times. They, they have to log uh, everything. What's and, happening uh, here, because this is a larger battery pack, mm-hmm. they have to shove more electrons in it. So they have to ramp up. So these mega chargers were really into the megawatt now, not kilowatt anymore. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't say a size, right? But you're No, but that. I would suspect these battery packs are five, six, seven, eight hundred kilowatt. We're, in, we're you know, mm-hmm. we're yep. seriously big battery packs. Now, With the weight the other thing, too, I want to mention, uh, and, you know, we'll mention it here in the second part, that um, these are the new 2170 cells. <laughs> they didn't these, say, but we're pretty sure. Yeah, right? these yeah. these cells really have legs on them. They're really going places. So mm-hmm. I think that the new chemistry and, and some of the new tech and the lower costs are yep. really starting to show you know, their positive face, uh, you know, for some of this new stuff. Um, the other thing too is the interior. I want to make a big point about the interior on, like, on the semi truck. Of course, if, if you've seen some of the photos, I'll put them up behind us. Gee, we have single position we've seen for that the before. driver. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not side by side. It's a yep. single position where the driver's right in front. There is a jump seat mm-hmm. over to the back yep. for a second passenger if you need to. A lot of glass in this truck. Mm-hmm. Dual screens uh, positioned exactly like the Model 3. Yeah. I did see side mirrors, but I think it's cameras. The, right? Actually, if you and look the at the picture, yeah. you'll see mm-hmm. the two, uh, right. one third of the screen are uh, cameras. Yeah, which is slick. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And the cameras are up uh, at the back of the cab pointing backwards. Mm-hmm. So it should mm-hmm. have a very good field of view on this. Blind the other thing too, I want to make a big point of, and... And this harkens back to the days when they introduced the Model X. When they introduced the Model X and the car was driving out and we saw that new blunt nose, right? Didn't have mm-hmm. the grill. Mm-hmm. I went, I know what the Model 3 is going to look like. And sure enough, it got the blunt nose. And of course, it made its way to the Model S. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking some time, and I've been tweeting about it. I said, you know what? If we see the interior of the Tesla semi-truck and it looks like a Model 3, 
we know what a refresh on the S and the X are going to look like. And sure enough, safe bet. This is exactly what's going on because yep. this semi truck has that same HVAC slit that we Certainly did on the video that, that way. we, we mm-hmm. covered. Yep. So I'm going to put some lunch money on the table here. We're going to have a nice friendly bet. There we go. That when we see a refresh of the interior on the Model S, maybe the Model X, but definitely on the Model S because it's a little it's long due. in the tooth, mm-hmm. we're going to see this new HVAC system in the car. Makes perfect sense. Economies of scale. That's what at the end of the day, that's what Elon's all about. And yeah. if we're making something that works, let's anyways, that's my prediction. So we'll revisit it when the time comes. Absolutely. But you heard it here first. First delivery is 2019. So if you're interested, they didn't talk about pricing. Oh, but this, I'm guessing this will be half a million, at half least. a million, yeah. four hundred thousand at least plus oh, yeah. you know, from that perspective. Oh, yeah. So cool. But what really I think blew people's minds. Um, I was excited about it, but I'll tell you why I'm not that excited after we talk <laughs> about it. Was Roadster? I'm saying Roadster 2.0, but the new Roadster coming out. So as they uh, drove this thing from the the back of one of the um, the cargo uh, containers. Um, beautiful looking car Mm -hmm. Uh, and the specs read those specs they're mind-boggling okay (laughs) yeah you were blown away Uh, yeah um well okay so here's the thing about the roadster um there were a lot of hints Mm -hmm. i mean elon dropped a hint you know really want to come to the semi-truck event because you know uh, you're not going to miss it right and then of course uh those folks with a model s and x who have referral codes now one of the prizes is a next gen roadster Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of speculation on the internet saying, oh, you know, wouldn't it be cool if the trucks pulled up and then the ramp came down and a roadster came out? Well, that's exactly what happened. Hmm. So the specs are just incredible. 620 mile EPA range. That's a thousand kilometers. This is unbelievable. That blew me away. Yeah. And that's at highway speed he was quoting. So if yeah. you're doing you know, stop and go city, it's going to be even longer, which is amazing. Yeah. Uh, uh, the car will do zero to 60 or zero to 100 kilometers per hour in 1.9 seconds. Now I, I, I have to go back and just remind folks because back in February, um, I put out some, um, some tidbits of information that mm-hmm. I got on the model three and, you know, battery packs, the large battery packs first, rear wheel drive first, that came true. The third bit that was fed to was, uh, some kind of car that we were working on. Now at the time I was told it was a model three, but after I put that out, I started thinking about it. It says, well, I don't think so. Maybe it's the next Roadster. Mm-hmm. Sure enough, that's exactly what it is. And they, I was told two seconds. So we're right in there. So that's okay. where that information came from. Anyhow, uh, it, the car will do a quarter mile in 8.8 seconds. Which that's is, just that mind blowing. The really car fast. has a 200 kilowatt hour battery pack. Of course, these are probably most likely the 2100, uh, 2170 cells in the car. Yeah. We're speculating, but I think the chances are pretty good that they're, oh, they're oh, cells. Oh, yes. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. It's probably a dual layer. It's probably yeah. a much thicker battery yeah. pack because this is a, a a smaller car true so uh yeah but it is a four-seater two plus two yeah well yeah, he did say the back seat's a little cramped a little that's tiny. fine that's but okay. uh, and the glass roof comes off yeah like a target roof trunk. thing uh-huh. yeah get this seven thousand three hundred and seventy six foot pounds of torque <laughs> Um, that number is nuts. It, yeah. It's just insane. I, I was watching. Some, I had to double check that. But I was watching was some recording. of the test ride videos mm-hmm. uh, this morning. Yeah. And every single time they pushed it, um, even the traction control couldn't keep the tires from slipping. It right. was amazing. Because it is all-wheel drive. It's got three motors, one up front and one behind and each of the, the back, re, uh, yeah, two in the exactly. back. So yeah. all-wheel drive. They're quoting a top speed of 250 miles per hour plus. So mm-hmm. if you live in those areas like in Germany on the Autobahn where you can pump it, this thing is going to fly. <laughs> Give it some road, it will go. Here is your spaceship steering wheel. You could quit bugging us about <laughs> it. Elon right. finally delivered. <laughs> yeah, I saw that picture going, there's the spaceship steering wheel. Yeah, it kind yeah. of still looks like Knight Rider just without the laser and missile buttons, but it's the same kind of steering yeah. wheel. I don't know if that'll make it to production, but it looks cool. Uh, well, you know, I have to caution you. Everybody was saying the same thing about Model 3, and look mm-hmm. what we got. True. So uh, mm-hmm. Tesla's pretty honest when they show yeah. a concept or a production prototypes. They don't do concepts. They do production prototypes. That what you see is pretty much what you get. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. In this case, I think uh, we're going to see everything on here. Um, interestingly enough, uh, uh, that the car has in that HVAC slit, they've actually put little two little small, very thin little LCD screens mm-hmm. for some fi- uh, situational awareness. We'll see how yeah. that pans out. Uh, then price. the price. Oh, my gosh. $200,000 U.S. Start. starting price. Mm-hmm. They do have a founder's edition, which is $250,000. i am going to expect that that's pretty uh, well loaded yeah. with all the features in it. And uh, first delivers. What's that magic number? 2020. 2020. There we yeah. go. Yeah, add another year, folks, just to be on the safe just side. Just to be on the safe side. Now, and they'll make a limited. They'll make a couple of thousand of these. I mean, they're not going to go crazy, obviously. They're going to get some nice cash from this. Look, it's a nice car. Certainly blown away with it. 
um, you know, three hundred and thirty thousand dollars Canadian to start. I mean, it's it's not going to be for, certainly for everybody. Are going to be very few that that can get into that and that are going to wait that amount of time. It's great, you know. I mean, I heard a lot of hoopla. Uh, the specs are phenomenal, um, but I think you know my take on the semi event was, eh, okay, it's okay. Yes, you know, we know that uh, Tesla is always a leader in innovation when it comes to electrification, so we would expect them to leapfrog and to come out with some mind boggling specs. Um, but there are other people, or organizations and companies working on trucks. The electric truck is actually getting a lot of visibility. Yes. Probably more than even potentially the electric car in some cases, because again, those, those financial aspects are a lot, there's a lot bigger case for it that you can make. So I watched the event going, okay, it was okay, but I wouldn't have been one of the ones in the audience hooplawing and whistling and cheering. It was okay. That wouldn't have been me. <laughs> I said, it was okay. Nice. But well, you have to you remember know. the roadster. Mm-hmm is a halo car yeah it's the car that really says look at us you know every car manufacturer has one of these things this is a low volume production car this mm-hmm. is not five hundred thousand cars a year they're not right. gonna have to build a special factory for this they could probably build this in a, in a separate building same thing with the semi truck and stuff so i'm not too worried about you know them ramping up and mm-hmm. and having to spend a lot of cash on production issues because these are more bespoke cars Agreed. they can actually build lower yep. uh, volume on this kind of thing so you know again i'm not changing my mind about mm-hmm. model three in terms of really got to focus on that but this kind of stuff is nice to put out there but I, we're looking at three or four years out for most of this yep. stuff so i'm not too worried about it right right at the moment mm-hmm. but it just shows that they seem to have a little bit more resources um, to be able to do these side projects now, whereas before it was always, you know, a small team right. working on things. They have well, a lot more true. engineers, more people I mean, now. JB's got to be working on something else. Exactly. I mean, and you know, don't yeah. forget, they did show a picture of this concept uh, pickup truck. I saw that too. And to be honest, I didn't think it was legit. I thought because they had a pickup truck inside of this and that thing would be huge well, and... It, 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 it really know. is just a semi truck cab put yeah. on a flat bag, just to, you know, as as a concept. Yeah, I don't think it's practical. But, no, no, they're they're not going to make no that. Way. But no I think in a lot of ways, the the <laughs> things that they do with that and how they show yes. it really kind of guide their thinking as to what they can yes. do for a pickup truck. And of course, when you put it out there, you get people's opinion mm-hmm. and you get their you know yeah. their impressions about yeah. it and stuff. So we'll we'll keep an eye on that and see what's happening. But right now, it's it's really Model Three production. But it's nice to see them starting to branch out a mm-hmm. little bit. And this kind of thing is probably not too taxing on their production capabilities because it's low volume i agree from the pickup truck i mean if they're going to come out with a design it's nice to see that you know again i don't think that's the final design but we know that pickup truck market at least in north america specifically the u.s is a huge market Mm -hmm. it's a very high margin product for uh, manufacturers and that's why a lot of them make suvs and pickup trucks because the margins are there and there's a big uh, uptake for them big big sales in fact i think suvs are now outselling standard midsize and even compact cars to a degree in the u.s anyway so pickup truck is something to be taken seriously and they have to come out with something that's going to not only haul some stuff but fit four or five people and and have those type of performance so it's nice to see that but i don't think it's going to look to be honest in my opinion anything like what they put out i think it's no, going to be something totally no, different. not on the pickup but, truck, but the the text and the engineering and the innovation certainly will be there absolutely yeah, yeah. and as you said it's nice to see them continuing to move forward in the innovation sphere uh, yeah game so good luck. So let us know uh, if you've got a reservation in for a Roadster because we'd love to come and video it when you get it <laughs> and take us for a test drive. We'll bring our neck braces, I think. Well, yeah, we might need oh, them. Yeah, you know? yeah. Strap yourselves in. Beautiful car, though. <laughs> Let's get on to some more uh, updates regarding Supercharger. We can't do a show without talking about Superchargers. Mm-hmm. And quickly, there's two new stations that have opened up around the world, one in Shanghai. And it's it's now the largest supercharger station in the world it's got over about 50 stalls the shanghai station and there's another one under construction in norway it's got 44 stalls and it's near the oslo uh, airport and then there's also new i think actually we might there's have the third one it just opened in Kettleman. One. okay and that's i'm not sure how many stalls that is 40 40 okay so it's 40 the largest stalls. one in the u.s there and, you go uh, yeah they converted an old uh, fast food restaurant and made nice. it into beautiful lounge there's there's some videos uh you know a couple of people mm-hmm. went to to have a look at it, it looks it looks yeah. very nice uh, i would like to see something like this in canada We'd love uh, maybe to. towards kingston mm-hmm. area halfway between toronto mm-hmm. and montreal that would that work out quite nice and those so, stations as you said they're now deploying solar panels to charge uh to help offset the charging and they're going to put in stores and restaurants so make it more of an experience 
convenience uh, type of element where you stop and you you can can do what you need to shop and things like that rather than try to find a a, a place off site. Yeah, they've the got stall, baristas, like a little baristas. coffee bars inside. I hope the coffee's good because I'd like to truck it out. It's going to be pretty slick. Yeah. If anybody is uh, goes to one, please send us an email. Let us know your experience, what it's like. We've had a lot of emails and comments regarding the USA federal EV tax rebate. That's credit, been tax credit. Credit, sorry, credit. Yes. And we just wanted to let people know where, uh, based on information that we have, where it's at. So HR1 Draft Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, that's what it's called, proposed to end the credit in December 31st of this year. The U.S. Senate, however, specifically the Finance Committee of that, proposed a version of the bill which keeps this credit in place. Which is a good thing. So right now, that's the way it's tracking. However, this bill still needs to be approved by each house, and we know that that isn't is challenging in the U.S. And then it's got to be merged back into single legislation, and passed again by both houses. And finally, it's got to get to uh, President Trump's signature, and mm-hmm. he's got to enforce or, or or sign it into act. So that's going to take some time. But the good thing about it is that they will maintain the credit throughout this process, or it will not end. Our understanding is it will not end December 31st. And But remember that the current sunset for vehicle manufacturers still remains in place of that 200000 uh, mm-hmm. in the U.S. So nothing changes from that perspective. So it's good. I mean, yeah, well, I mean, good it cost, and bad. Well, well, when it was first put out, so I mean, there was a huge panic on mm-hmm. the Internet. Yep. And, uh, you know, everybody's flipping out. And, of course, that, you know, it drove some sales, some people to get into the S or the X yes. on the fear that this was going to go away. So That's nice. the bad part about it is that it drove people to react saying negatively, oh, they're dropping it. So, you know, am I going to keep my reservation or am I going to get electric car? Well, like, if Tesla gets a do, sale right? out of the so, deal, it's not a loss for Tesla, right? right? Mm-hmm. Um, but... You know, this affects everybody. So, of course, you know, all the auto manufacturers that would have been affected got together and they kind of fought back a little bit. So it's nice to see that some cooler heads are prevailing now. So uh, Ten years ago, they wouldn't have fought back. Yeah, exactly. So, (laughs) you know, uh, right now it's safe. Don't panic about Mm it. Um, Hopefully this stuff passes because part of the deal was it was wrapped up in some other legislation. It was very unpopular. That's right. So, Mm -hmm. um, you know, that alone probably wouldn't have passed. I mean, if it was separated altogether, you'd have a a, a worse chance of it or actually Mm -hmm. better chance of it actually failing and falling through the cracks and, and being cut. But... Uh, now that it's kind of rolled back in and, you know, they're looking at it, it's it's it's, it's a better situation. So anyways, um, no fear right now. It looks like yep. we're okay. These things take time, so we'll, mm-hmm. we'll see what happens. We'll keep an eye on this, but uh, it's kind of important that they keep it in place. And that was interesting because you did an informal poll, and then I've seen a couple of other polls mm-hmm. um, after it was announced that, this, that the, the credit may be ending yeah. about people that are actually going to cancel a reservation or cancel their, you know, change their minds of getting an EV. And I think the high percentage of people saying, no, I'm going to remain it or I'm going to continue yeah, on I, EV I back. did a a really informal mm-hmm. nine scientific yeah. poll on yeah. test on 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 Twitter, and I just asked people. I said, you know, are you canceling because of this? And seventy five percent of the respondents saying, no, I'm keeping my Model Three reservation. I think twelve percent came back and said, well, I'm going to look at an S or an X. Another eleven percent, so I'm going to mm-hmm. look at another EV, and the rest were like, I'm going to cancel or undecided. Right. There, there's so, another poll that I saw, which is around that same. 80 percentile that you know people so what that keep so it. what that tells mm-hmm. me though is that most people still feel that the model 3 is a very compelling vehicle and it's worth waiting for so and we would tend to agree it's 100 uh, percent agree yeah. yeah definitely worth waiting for especially after being in one <laughs> let's just go across the pond for a second just talk uh, about london england in the uk that they uh, i think we talked about a little bit on another show about mm-hmm. some lamp ev charging there's some concepts that were coming out where london's now rolling out with that in uh, kensington and chelsea townships they've started deploying what they call ovo ovo energy chargers uh the max output is only 4.6 kilowatt but um you can park it's more convenient because you're parking uh, in a spot that's got one of these and they can put these in many many lamp posts uh, Mm -hmm. so easier to deploy um, and, and tap into the power that's there and they're charging 15p per kilowatt hour, or you can get a monthly subscription to, to lower the it's cost. It's like a destination so, charger. A little thing. destination charger, yeah. So good for the Zoe's and all that stuff that's yeah, around excellent. the world. That's great. So let's get to that other manufacturer news as well. Car shows, of course, are still going on around the world, and uh, a lot of the manufacturers are using these to reveal their plans. So Mitsubishi has finally come out with a plan for an all-electric e-evolution model. It's a high-performance SUV with all-wheel drive. Don't really have much specs other than a cool looking picture or a few pictures that have been <laughs> put out. Um, no timing within the next five years, maybe 2020, that magic date again, oh, who maybe. knows? 
Uh, good to see them in it, though. Yeah, uh, I'm glad. I mean, don't quiet, forget, right? uh, you know, they had the IME for a number of years. Yep. It's now being discontinued. So mm-hmm. now they're like, okay, well, let's test the water to see what's going on. But I think the fact that all the other manufacturers, for the most part, have announced electrification plans that Mitsubishi has decided, okay, we need to stay the course and uh, work on something else. So And that SUV or or crossover CUV seems to be a really sweet segment That's, that everybody yeah, wants it, to go very after. Much is, yeah. And it's a good platform for electrification yes. right, from that. Nissan, of course, we'll talk about the Leaf in a sec, but they've announced something that they call the IMX, and it's a new all-electric autonomous crossover concept. Again, this is a concept, high-performance SUV, dual electric motors with advanced version of ProPilot to get more autonomy. They're talking about a high capacity battery pack of uh, estimating 600 kilometer range. That's the European standard, of course. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be less EPA, no release date. But again, there are plans that they want to expand electrification throughout their lineup. And it's great to hear that the Leaf 2.0 is doing very well. So it's been out for just about two months now. Nissan has sold um, over 9,000 Leafs in the, that time period, excuse me. And that's actually better than. All the lease, the Gen 1 lease, they sold in the launch year for that mm-hmm. in 2010. So they're, they're doing quite well. That's only, of course, in Europe and Japan. Um, nothing is coming to the U.S. yet. Now they, we talked about it. Actually, they just yep. started production. Mm-hmm. They just of, started production. Yeah, in Tennessee at mm-hmm. their plant in Smyrna. I, so Smyrna? are they selling yet in the U.S. or is it? No, start I think it's January. In January. They're starting yeah. inventory right now, and I think right. they're going on sale in January. Right. So yeah. any of our viewers that come across uh, from the U.S. or Europe that have come across a Leaf, let us know your thoughts on that. Yeah, we'd like to. Uh, we'd like well, to I fully some, expect to you know, see it at the yeah. uh, auto show in yeah. February. We we expect to see it. Yeah. So uh, hopefully they'll have uh, maybe. And we'll uh, get a chance. Well, hopefully. plug and drive might mm-hmm. hopefully have one, and we'll mm-hmm. be able to uh, to do a test ride in that, and yeah. uh, we'll bring a video about that. And who was the first country to get the in Europe to get the Leaf? Because that's kind of after Japan of course it went well, to europe that'd be first. norway good guess norway of course leading the pack so and they're the first ones since they got they were the first ones to get the gen one they were the first ones to get the, the gen mm-hmm. two so good for nissan we talked about honda on the last show what they're coming out with and they've released another uh ev concept all of a sudden they're now jumping into the game big time they call it their sports ev concept and it's based on a new electric platform for 2019 that'll have some artificial intelligence uh capabilities but no other specs. It's kind of a cooler looking thing than the last one. But it's very interesting the design decision that they made on these last two concepts with this black front with the two mm-hmm. angel eye things. Yeah. Looks kind of old golf type. Hey, everybody has a design language, yeah. right? So. Yeah. I'd have to think well, about I'm, that. Well, I'm just glad mm-hmm. that Honda's actually considering it. I mean, they're not building any of these things yet, mm-hmm. but at least they're... You know, they're they're judging public interest on this thing. So you have to start somewhere. So. And we know they have the capabilities to get into building these things in mass quantities. So let's hope that they start doing that. Hey, soon. Honda, if you're listening, in. if you build it, they will come. They will come. Absolutely. And let's talk about BMW. I know you like the i3. I think it's okay. You like the <laughs> i3 a lot. They've hit a record milestone of delivering or building their 100,000 i3 since the start of uh, production or since it was launched in September of 2013. They're produced in Leipzig, Germany, or Leipzig, Germany, if I pronounce that right, mm-hmm. a facility. And uh, they produce these at about 120 per day. I didn't, I, I didn't run across that number before, so that's actually a decent number mm-hmm. when you think about it. And by 2025, of course, BMW plans to have 25 models with electrified drivetrains. So that's a, a combination of plug-in hybrids, I would imagine, and full EVs. And we know that we talked about the 3 Series being fully electrified at some point in the next couple of years. The three series, yeah, a five series. Five series, yeah. yeah. Those so kind of cars. it's all coming. So yeah. good for BMW. I mean, i3 is a decent car. Um, I see a lot of them around here. A lot of them. You've been in it. You've driven many times. Yep. You've got your friend to look at one, yes. I think, right? Yeah, Steve, Steve bought one, actually. Yeah, there you he, go. he has a Model 3 reservation. And he just had some money. He says, I'm nice. going to buy an i3. And yeah. that's what he did. So decent car. And so he we'll... loves it. He loves it. Yeah. He actually took it to Montreal. But... Nice. Excellent. So good for BMW. Glad to see them doing and uh, I, I know we talked a little bit, I think, on another show about, uh, I think it was a Kia one, but Hyundai and Kia, of course, are, are uh, Kia is owned by Hyundai, majority owned. So they're continuing electrification plans coming out with new electric SUVs for the 2018, so for next year, that's what they say. They have the, the Hyundai Kona model and the Kia Niro. Uh, the production targets of about 18,500 for the Kona and 21,000 for the Niro for next year. That's how much they plan on building. 
They have two battery pack options for these small uh, SUV type vehicles, a 39, almost a 40 kilowatt hour and just over a 64 kilowatt hour. So EP range of around 210 miles, which is a pretty common number nowadays for the, the larger stick, pack. Right? Yeah. Price point about 39 USD. So that seems to be in line. I mean, with that compact SUV type uh, market. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll see. And again, if anybody happens to come, I know there's been some spy shots and things like that. So they're out there testing and things are happening. They so will come. probably see one at the auto show, maybe. Hopefully. Potentially. Yeah. I think they'll start doing the circuit next year. And that's it from a uh, content for the show perspective. So we wanted to trim it down a little bit because there's a lot of things going on. But let's get to our mailbag. Mailbag. Love mailbag. We love let's mailbag. Get into it. What do we have on tap? So we got a few. And uh, Trevor hasn't seen these. So I'm just going to hit him up <laughs> right, off, right off the cuff Cold here. Cold turkey for me. <laughs> it's all good. So we have a, uh, an email from Gary. Gary doesn't say where he's from, but he's got a few questions. Um, watched our our. our, our our in-depth video for the Model mm -hmm. 3 and got it's some questions out of that. It's not, it's not a review. review. I, had, I was trying to find my choice of words there. <laughs> he talked. To, he asked again about the turning radius, what we thought yeah. about it. So, I mean, we don't have measurements of the turning radius, mm. but it felt pretty sharp. Oh, yeah. You know, really easy to turn. Uh, you know, and, you and know. we've been getting a lot of questions, a lot of feedback. And one of the things that, that people have asked, of course, is what's the steering like on the mm -hmm. Model 3? And... I don't think we really covered it in the video all that much, but it's the very... The settings for it. Yeah, yeah. well, no, mm -hmm. I, I think just no. how direct it is. There's mm -hmm. no there's no slop, right. like just a slight little bit, and you mm -hmm. can actually feel it. So uh, I don't know what's going on, and maybe it's just, you know, the steering uh, geometry or whatever's going on it, but it's a very direct... Um, you feel very connected to the road on the mm -hmm. car. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, in the video, you can see the turning radius was very quick. We, yeah, we, pulled, we were on you know, two-lane road and just... We just turned right in the middle right of the road there. and came yeah. back. Yeah. Um, I know on my SUV, I just came out here, and I, I could barely make a U-turn. Yeah. Uh, I would have to do a three-point turn sometimes. Mm -hmm. But on this car, you wouldn't have to, so... Uh, yep. What else does he say? He asks about ambient lighting. So uh -huh. does it stay on? It does. When it, you, It's an option. You can turn it on or yeah, off. Yeah, you can turn it on. And uh, the lighting is in the foot wells. It's not in the cup holders, but uh, it was in some doors, if it, I remember correctly. It was correctly. in the doors, in the cup the holders in the doors. It was, it was in it? the center okay. console. Mm -hmm. Yep. I didn't see anything on the dash. You can't change the colors that I could no, see. It was only no, one color, it's, not it's one of white. these fancy things that you yeah. can change it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How's the sound system compared to the sound system compared to others, like Bose and stuff? I mean, we found it. It was it very, very was good. Really I know. Nice. Of yeah. course, we we said this on the video mm -hmm. that we couldn't mm -hmm. um, really crank it up to play some music because of copyright issues yeah. on YouTube videos. They they really hate that kind of thing. So, um, I don't know. We listened to it. We cranked it. It, really it sounds nice. really good. Yeah. So um, mm -hmm. I have no qualms about it. I'm. Yeah. I mean, there's going to be some audio aficionados mm -hmm. out there that are going. Oh, I'm going to rip out all the speakers and do my own sure. thing. That's fine. But I think it's for the average personal. for mm -hmm. the average person, this got a yeah. lot of bass in it. Um, yep. I've since discovered that where we pointed out in the lower corner in the back, that is where the I saw that. Is. Saw there's a video out on that, so it, I saw that too. So that is it's where the subwoofer neatly is. tucked back there. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So no, I don't think you have any problems with the sound system. There it's really go. good. Can the seat heaters be turned on remotely with the app? Um, uh, I don't remember. I don't remember seeing that in the app. It is on the S and the and X, the S, yeah. and because the Model Three, the software is not finished yet. We haven't seen that capability. I would mm -hmm. expect it to be there in due time. Right. Agreed. I, I don't remember seeing it, but I think again, it, and it's changed since we did, did the Model 3 has been getting at, so. like once mm -hmm. or twice a week updates yeah, just to get lot. the software caught up for, mm -hmm. for release. So, And is there a limit on how long you can preheat the car with the app? Like a time limit. So if you wanted to do you know up to 70 degrees for half an hour or something like that. Can't answer sure. that on the Model 3 because we yeah, didn't get a chance didn't... to try that. But I know on the S and X, you can just turn it on and set a temperature and it will maintain it. So, so. once it gets to that temperature, it just maintains yeah. basically. Mm -hmm. So there you go. So hopefully, Gary, that was uh, good and answered your questions. Now, another email from Sandro. Sandro is in Germany. Uh, thanks for emailing us in and hope things are well in Deutschland. Are there cornering lights like the Model S? No. There aren't. And there's no adaptive headlights. There's no adaptive. We did test that. We looked for that. Yeah. Um, we did point out how they work. Are the mirrors dimming dimming at night? Um, the rear view auto, mirror? Yeah, he just says are, are, are the mirrors. So I'm guessing all of them. The, no, the rear view, not, yes, yes. Not the not side, the side view, mirrors. No. The they side do view. tilt Correct. down. There's a mm -hmm. setting on the screen where you can tilt them down where they will tilt down when you put the car into reverse. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, yeah. that's pretty, I mean, that's the same thing as all the other ones. Yeah. So. How good are the LED high beams? Very, um, very good. We thought they were good. And again, you can adjust these things yeah. fairly easy. So you don't have to get out there with a screwdriver. And I think um, during our nighttime take. drive, we were very impressed with the lighting yep. on this on, yep. on the Model 3. So you will not have a problem. It's it's excellent. Um, 
Sorry, Sandro, you asked about the diameter of the cup holders. Will it hold a large Dunkin' Donut cup? <laughs> I, yes. We didn't measure it, but it, they look pretty good. So. Yeah, they're good size. No I'm, sure, I'm sure they'll hold that. Not a, so. not a huge big gulp or anything like exactly. that. That's an American thing. But, Thank uh, you very much for the uh, for the email, Sandro. <laughs> yeah. Um, something a little bit different. Uh, actually, let's stick with this one. So there was a question about the panoramic roof on the Model 3. This is from Tim. Tim doesn't say where he's from. Mm-hmm. Just wanted to know um, how the panoramic room is co- roof is constructed. Is it tempered or laminated? Now, that's that Both. gorilla Both. glass that they're talking about. Well, right? Tesla, okay, so this kind of goes mm-hmm. back to some of the reveal stuff last last night. That mm-hmm. they, they, yeah, uh, that's Tesla true. made a very big deal about the glass on this new semi-truck. Yeah, well, that's, that's, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they call it armor yeah. glass. Now, yeah. Tesla, over the last few years, has been really beefing up their glass division. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's really showed its head, of course, on the Model X with that big windshield. Mm-hmm. And just to, that's also in cohesiveness with the solar. Like, are there some well, it's, engineering it's, going back and forth the, there? It's the coating, it's the right. lamination, mm-hmm. it's the protection, right. and all the other stuff. So mm-hmm. that first showed up on the Model X, and of course, then on the Model Three, and of course now the all glass roof on the Model S. So, yeah. um, and of course now with the semi truck. So Tesla has some really serious chops on 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 the glass in the glass mm-hmm. department. Um, again, in the video, I mean, we were in pure sunlight, and we it was yeah. not an issue. They have very good glass coatings on it, so no it is tempered yeah. glass because by law, you know, all safety. the glass has to be safety glass, tempered mm-hmm. glass, and it is laminated. It has coatings, so it's it, it won't yeah. be an issue. Because Tim was mentioning that Kias and, and Hyundai's have had some problems with their tempered sunroofs shattering without a cause. So there could be some. It could be a problem with the supplier, the mm-hmm. the chemistry. It could mm-hmm. be anything. Mm-hmm. At this point, um, I mean, I haven't seen any issues with the. I mean, glass can break if you get a yep. stone. I mean, Bjorn just got a stone chip in his windshield, yeah. and mm-hmm. he and he preheated uh, incorrectly, and he cracked his windshield on the Model X. But then again, that was partly because it was a stone chip. So there's already something kind of Cause. prematurely failing yeah. that, but. Um, uh, I wouldn't really worry about it unless you get golf ball size hail and stuff. It's not really going to be that much of an issue. There you go. So you don't have to worry, Tim, about the glass roof. It's going to be a really <laughs> nice experience for you. And finally, our last uh, mailbag email is from Ray in Los Angeles. How you doing, Ray? Thanks for emailing us. Appreciate you watching. He wanted to us to explain the difference between the Model 3's permanent magnet motors and uh, the difference between that and the SNX's AC induction motors. Oh, wow. Well, that, that's without a, being too technical. That's and, a can of worms right there. Really? I know. Okay. I've had a lot of people ask me about that, and I'll be honest with you. I haven't really delved really mm. deeply into this, but... It's supposed to be longer lasting and more efficient, right? Well, Those okay, are, so my, what I understand. my understanding with a permanent magnet motor is that... Because you're dealing with permanent magnets on there, rather than inducing a magnetic field in the rotor itself, that there's some extra costs involved. Mm-hmm. But because the Model 3 is higher volume, they can keep those costs down. Economies of scale. Exactly. So the other thing, too, is a, a permanent magnet motor is a more efficient motor. It's what they call mm-hmm. a synchronous motor, where where the rotating magnetic field and the rotor run at the same kind of speed in RPMs. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's more efficient as far... And, and because it's more efficient, that's why we're seeing a longer range on the Model 3 than the S and the X. AC induction motors, on the other hand, are asynchronous motors. There's some slippage between how where the rotor is in in orientation to the rotating magnetic field. I know it's really technical, but I think what we're seeing here with uh, Tesla's new semi truck mm-hmm. and the Roadster and stuff is that I think we're going to start seeing a shift the rest of the product line over to permanent magnet motors. Right. They did say that the semi truck is using the same motors as found on the Model Three. Yeah, we know they're permanent too. magnet. The Roadster, of course, I think we're seeing a shift towards so, that. So they seem to be, again, higher performance, more reliable. Well, like some people would say more, that right? uh, that an AC induction motor is more suited <clears throat> for higher performance cars. But mm-hmm. I think there's a shift now. Mm-hmm. I think Tesla's got some really good magnetic people and yep. some electrical people on staff yep. now where they can see a clear path to really um, getting the cost of the permanent mm-hmm. magnet, magnet motors down, of course, and mm-hmm. beefing up the production and, yep. and the performance, I should say. And these are built in house at Gigafactory. Yeah, they're all built in house. Yeah. Tesla does mm-hmm. not farm the this motors. stuff out, That's so right. it's you know it's part of their IP, right? Mm-hmm. So. Uh, I hope that Good answers question. the question. I mean, there's lots of YouTube videos. Just yep. Google it. You can learn a lot more. I'm not totally technical on that stuff because I haven't really dived Sounded into it. Sounded pretty technical to me. <laughs> you got me. Well, yeah. that's just a cursory, like, five minutes. Okay, so this guy's going to ask me a question. Exactly. I better file it. <laughs> that's it. So, anyway. But thanks, Ray. And thanks for yeah. everybody who sends in mailbag. We do try to get uh, some responses, but we want to keep some for the show. So thank you for, very much. For, for daily that. usage, it doesn't matter. Right. It's it's a motor, and it just it works. So. It's going to go, and they're going to warrant it for warranty it for quite a long time. Yep. 
Well, that's it for the mailbag segment. Now, we wanted to bring up something before we close the show. There's an event coming up in December uh, that Ben has uh, put together. Uh, it's called TeslaCon 2017. If you haven't heard about it, you can check it out. Just Google TeslaCon 2017, or you can go to the website at https colon backslash backs or forward slash forward slash, sorry, teslacon.online. But just Google it, it'll pop up. And really, it's a it's the first of its kind. It's a Tesla and electric vehicle fan web summit. And we're proud to say that we've been invited to participate in this mm -hmm. uh, summit and uh, do some Q&As and so forth. So check it out. It's going to be the first of its kind. It's on uh, December 16th, which I believe is a Saturday, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. uh, coming up next month. Anything you want to add to that? Or? No, uh, we, the agenda will be posted fairly soon, mm -hmm. so keep an eye on that. We can't give you any more details at this point because it's still being worked yep. out, but there's some really good uh, guest speakers, including ourselves, involved. So if you're interested in this kind of thing, it's basically most of the you know the, the Tesla YouTube people are mm -hmm. getting together um, to really do a lot more Q&A on a more personal level because it's not going to be thousands and thousands of people. It's more of a smaller mm -hmm. community uh, type of online web conference. So I encourage you to check it out. So, cool idea, though. Yeah. Absolutely. And Looking thanks, forward ben. to it. Yeah, we look forward to it. We're putting that together. Um, how can people contact us then? So if they want to email us. Well, stuff. the best place to email us is, is at m3ocshow at gmail.com. And uh, you can also reach us on Twitter. My handle is at Model3Owners. And I'm at Kenneth Bocor, but he's, he's got more people than I do, so <laughs> check him out more. I don't say too much. Yeah. Um, you can also check out our forum, and that's uh, Model3OwnersClub.com, as usual. We also have a Facebook page. Just Google, or not Google, but on Facebook. Just search for Model3OwnersClub, and you'll find our, uh, our Facebook page on there, that's too. Right. And uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to our YouTube channel, because every little bit helps. Don't forget click on the little bell icon in the mm -hmm. corner too. So every time we put out a video, get instant notification. Works very well. And please, and we want to thank our Patreon campaign um, uh, providers or people that are helping us through that. But if you're interested, please check it, check it out as well. Yeah, you can really find that at patreon.com forward slash Model 3 Owners Club. Yep, there you go. And we appreciate it. It helps a lot as we continue to do more shows. Well, that's uh, episode 25 in the bag, Ken. It's in the can. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. Take care, and we'll see you next time. See you later. Thanks for watching.